So someone asks a question on Twitter, and I responded by saying, eh, "That's not really possible." And the next day, I solve the problem. What is that called? A few days ago, a user contacted me on Twitter and posted a very interesting question. And that question was, "How do I create or change clones based on、uh, where they are facing?" And、uh, for example,、uh, here I have this character, and、uh, I want to only generate clones on all the surfaces that are pointing to the right or to the left or top or bottom or front or back or something like that. And I came up with this setup. Where this is a a geometry modifier, where you can、uh, define which areas of the model will generate clones, and it works with animated objects and static objects and all that. And、uh, in this tutorial, I want to show you how I made that using uh, my uh, C nodes modifier. So、uh, this is a C nodes deformer or a geometry group. I'm going to start、uh, from scratch. And、uh, build this up to explain not only the、uh, nodes you need to add, but、uh, the thought process behind it. So、um, I can go here and、uh, delete this and、uh, turn off the cloner for now. Now the reason I'm using a cloner is that I am going to take this object, which is a mesh object. Other than that, I've put it under a connect object because I only want the Mesh data. I do not want anything else、uh, about this, and it's got、uh, quite a few components to it. So in here, you can add any object. I'm going to leave this because it's fairly complex. And generally, any objects, any number of objects you add underneath this connect object is going to be considered a single object. I've just、uh, made sure to remove the weld so I don't change、uh, by mistake the point count、uh, by the connect object connecting up any、uh, points that are very close to each other. So consider this a single object, a single object. Excellent. Now let's go and add our modifier here, and it's going to be a geometry modifier. If I go to list view, you'll see geometry modifier group. Just look for modifier, and、uh, use it just uh, like a、uh, deformer. So you can put it underneath、uh, the hierarchy here or on top of the hierarchy.、It、doesn't really make a huge difference. And、uh, after, if I double click here, I've got a no my own、um, uh, node set up where I can uh, uh, work nicely and cleanly. And、uh, what happens with this、uh, empty now、uh, geometry modifier group? It's going to receive any geometry from whatever is above it, just like a deformer. It's going to do its magic, whatever it does, and then it's going to export that geometry. And that geometry is going to replace whatever this is. So just like with、uh, deformers, this is what、uh, happens: the object is replaced. So in the cloner, what I've done is I've used this、uh, single object as the source to clone using multi instances, and、uh, that's just about it. I will receive my result of whatever points I'm generating or changing, and、uh, it will clone. Little、um, low-res、uh, spheres, and because now it just uses the default object, it just、uh, places a little sphere on each and every one of the vertices because、uh, the clone itself is set to distribution vertex, and that's pretty much it. Multi-instance to make it、uh, faster and object mode. So let me turn this off and see what we have here. So in the geometry modifier group, what I want to do is the following thing. And I'm going to go and press、uh, Shift C to bring up my commander and doodle. I'm going to doodle paint, so、um, we know what we are doing here. So what I want to do is find a way to define a plane. So I'm going to create a plane, which is going to be somewhere offset of this、uh, object, and、uh, it's going to have subdivisions. Excellent. My drawing skills are impeccable.、Uh, because the viewport is fairly slow,、um, I think that's why I'm missing all these lines. So imagine、uh, a grid. I'm going to take each point of this grid, 
and uh, do what's um, called ray casting. So uh, let me uh, delete this and let's assume that now we're viewing the character from the front and that my uh, ray casting plane is here, right? That plane I showed you and this is its profile, very thin. Each point has a normal direction because uh, points have normals to indicate uh, which way they're facing. And I'm going to use that normal direction to fire a ray. And that ray, I'll define its uh, length, how far I want it to go. If it doesn't hit anything until it reaches its maximum search distance, um, it won't do anything. But in the case that a ray hits something, the minute it hits the surface of whatever object exists in here, it's going to take that particular position where the ray hit and it's going to add it to a set of points which then are going to allow the cloner to clone on. And uh, this is the uh, very simple rough explanation of how the system is going to work. And um, let's start building this. So the first thing we need to do uh, over here is add a plane. So I'm going to press C in here and add a plane. I can't help you with typing, but I can help you with uh, notes. Uh, so we have uh, geometry and I can connect it up here. And now the previous object, whatever that is, is being replaced, as we said earlier. Now I do want it to be facing the minus Z, its own minus Z. And uh, now I need to find a way to move this so that when I'm firing the, the rays, uh, the object is uh, pretty much within the, the view of uh, each and every one of these uh, points. Because currently you will see uh, it's pointing this way because this is the plus Z where the blue arrow is. So it's firing rays this way. And uh, what this will do is just go halfway through his leg and maybe a bit of his hip and all that. So I want to find a way to be able to not only offset this, but rotate it around as well, while it's always facing the center. So uh, I want to do this not on the object itself, because it will be easy to convert this to a proper op uh, stream and go to the coordinates here and do stuff. But you can see nothing is moving here. And that's because geometry and uh, points and all that are always calculated in local uh, space and here it's not the op stream it's a geometry that's going here and this is one of the fundamental understandings of uh, the node system that although I'm pushing the matrix in a certain direction and adding a certain rotation uh, the points themselves because you already know that in any object in cinema 4d if I make uh, a normal object so I'm going to get a cube and I'm going to make it editable, right? And I'm going to go to points mode and I'm going to double click on this point. And uh, the coordinates of this point is 100 on the X, 100 on the Y and 100 on the Z. Excellent. Now if I take this cube and I move it and I go back to that same point, you will see that the value hasn't changed because the values are calculated from the axes of the cube. So I may be moving this around in my global space, but the points are always in the same relative position to the axes of the object. And this is exactly the effect you are seeing over here. So let me go back to my nodes and click on this. So I may be pushing it, but each point always remains in the same position. And uh, when the data is returned in the object, it's just going to go wherever that uh, single object's uh, uh, center is going to be. So I can't just uh, do that. So let me toggle it back only to geometry. How do we move the points? Because that is the question. I want to keep the axes in the middle and just move the points, each and every one of the points in a certain direction and then rotate the points in a certain direction. And uh, the way to do that is fairly simple. There is a node called transform elements. And uh, let's go transform elements. Let me find it. Transform element. There you go. And uh, this transform element, you can tell it what you want to uh, transform. And it's a bit hidden here. If I go here, you will see that it also has this matrix over here. Uh, 
So I want to transform the points and I'm going to put the geometry here and put the geometry back here. So without moving the object itself, I'm going to move the points based on a matrix. So now I can raise the points up, I can push them in a certain direction, I can uh, push them, let's say, on the Z, and I can do all sorts of uh, interesting things. I can uh, rotate it that way, or I can rotate it this way. But you can see that we have a bit of an issue when we rotate it uh, that particular way, because now it's rotating from the center of the points. So the way I'm going to drive this, and this is one of those things where you learn it once and then you, you sort of uh, realize, I want to use a separate matrix for the moves, and I want to use a separate matrix for the rotations, because I want that pivot point to always stay in the center. So what I'm going to do here, which is fairly simple again, but you need to know this, is uh, I'm going to use the transform matrices. So transform matrices. And what this does is it uses two matrices or three matrices or four matrices to generate a single matrix. And uh, without getting too much into the details, if I go here and I add, let's add all the inputs. And I want to put the result of these matrices in this uh, transform, because this is a, a matrix. So let me put this here. And uh, now, if I go here, you will see that that transform has been replaced by whatever the result from these two is. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use one of these matrices for the move. And I want to make sure uh, the correct one is used. And uh, let me rotate it. And there you go. You can see that. Uh, one matrix, I'm going to use it to offset uh, the points, and the other one, I'm going to use it to rotate the points. So although the object resides still in the center, um, the combination of the transform matrices and the transform element set to points will move and rotate my points from that pivot. And that will become much more important as we go along. Uh, because the point data that's coming from the geometry, so the point positions and uh, the normals and all that, need to be calculated in what we call global space. This is the setup that's going to work for you. So the next thing I want to do is get those point positions and those point normals. I am going to use the normal direction in order to fire those rays. And the only thing I need is the direction and um, the particular node I'm going to use later on is going to deal with the details. So let me just add an info and find the points info. And the points info allows you to get some geometry and uh, read the normals in an array form and the positions. And these are all vectors, three numbers, the normals and the positions. And uh, the way I'm going to use uh, this data is in a ray collision. So type collision, ray collision. And what a ray collision is, um, it's fairly simple. You set a start and end point or a start and a direction. And I'm going to use the direction. And if I go here and add uh, the inputs, the direction, then the end uh, is going to be um, omitted. Nothing's going to, the end is going to do absolutely nothing. So we have these two modes. But even in the previous mode, let me go and add all the inputs so we can see all the data here. So imagine, and I'm going to go back again to my Shift-C Doodle, Doodle Paint, very useful tool. And uh, actually, I like to drag it up here. When I changed my uh, my layout, it disappeared because I haven't saved it in my layout. So let me show you what that means. Imagine if we have a mesh object here and uh, we set a start and an end position. So let's say the start position is here and the end position is here. The ray cast it will fire a ray from the start position, which is just a vector, a number. Um, the, coordinates of the point all the way and connect it to the end position and uh, through that path that it travels 
it hits the object on the surface once here and once here. And um, what it will return, first of all, is the polygon index of that polygon that was in the way for each and every one of these collisions. It will return a bool if it collided or not. It will give us the distance of the collision. So this collision has this as a distance over here. Oh, my drawing skills are impeccable. So this is the distance for collision one, and this is the distance for collision two. So we're going to get those distances. Let me undo that. And we're going to get a hit position. And uh, that hit position is the coordinate in global uh, coordinates, uh, all local to the object. Okay. Uh, but everything's in the center, so global and local are the same. It's going to give us that position in space, um, the x, y, z coordinates of that position in space. And that's pretty much the number we are going to use. Now, if I go to outputs and add all the outputs, uh, I have some more things. I can get the normal at that point. I can get uh, all sorts of uh, the barycentric uh, coordinates and all that. And uh, I can also um, use the hit index. So the first point with the first collision is going to have an index of zero and the next index is going to have a uh, the, the next collision is going to have an index of one and if uh, this object here um let's say the object was more complex and was like this and had more geometry to it then you would get subsequent uh, this would be collision uh, two let me go and uh, add some color to this. Um, uh, this will be collision um, two. Uh, this would be collision three. This would be collision four. And this will be collision five and so forth. So we can tell this node to return to us um, which collision index. And we can even iterate through these and get all the points and, and do stuff like that. In our case, uh, the, the only information we require from this is if it collided, so we need to know if a collision occurred, and uh, that will say, okay, if a collision occurred, use that point for the cloner to clone. So return that point in, in, in the geometry stream. And the other one is the hit position. So I can very comfortably go and start deleting all these um when i say deleting uh what i'm doing is just removing them from the ui because i don't need that and uh, i'm going to use the direction so the end uh, is not necessary and even this parameter i've set it here i don't need this and i will need uh, the object because in here we need to set the geometry uh, what are we trying to find hits on, not where the hits are coming from. So this is the object that's going to generate the rays and our character, I can delete this, our character would be the object we are um, trying to see if any collisions occurred. So this is what's going to happen here. And this geometry comes directly from here because uh, this, is the, uh, this is the object that is being deformed, so to speak, by the geometry modifier group. So um, I, do I need the maximum distance? No, I don't uh, need the hit direction. So basically, not even the, the matrix. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to read the geometry from here. I'm going to use my positions as the start positions, each and every one of these points. And I'm going to use uh, the normal as the direction. But we need to make sure that uh, these things um, work properly. So we're going to get the normals and put them in the direction. And you will see that immediately we get this nice little uh, conversion node. Because the normals are in array. And this, when you see a single indicator of the, the type of uh, uh, attribute, that means that's an iteration. So an iterate uh, collection is uh, what's going to be uh, generated. So this will create an iteration and feed these numbers in here. And as far as the positions are concerned, we put them right in there and it will do that same conversion for us. Excellent. So this part is done. Now the question is, um, 
how do I generate those points? Well, first of all, let's bring the geometry in here. And the geometry is coming in. And this is firing the rays from each point in the direction of our model based on the rotation and the uh, position. Because this, I'm going to raise it up. And uh, you can go in the plane and change how big it is. And um, I think that I'm going to make this 200 by 200 and make this uh, 100 by 100. So we're firing 10,000 rays in this setup. Excellent. Now, the next thing I want to do is use these hit positions and um, create some sort of, um, let's say, point cloud. I want a set of points that only contain the ones where a collision was detected by those firing rays towards our animated character. So this will be done by using an array because it's the simplest way to um, propagate that data down the, the geometry stream. And uh, we're still looking at this. We don't have to look at this anymore. I'm going to do some changes later on. I'm just going to leave this over here. And what I want to do is create, a, first of all, a, uh, an empty array. So I'm going to type uh, C and build. And if you go to build, I want to create an array. So build always creates arrays. And you tell it what kind of uh, elements it's going to have. And we're going to have vectors. So this is going to go purple and all that. And by default, it creates these four empty ones. Uh, zero, 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 not empty. I'm going to remove these. I just want an empty array. And now I want to start loading this array with any uh, point position, any little vector number coming from the hit position, only if collided returns true. Because what's happening here, this is a loop, and it takes the first normal and the first position on that plane. It uses the point position as the starting point and the normal as the direction and it fires a ray of a thousand centimeters and it's looking for the first hit whatever that first hit is and when that hit happens it will return a true and the position if something if a collision doesn't happen this is just going to return false and no hit position so how do we do that well there is a node that is called append elements. So C append uh, elements. And append elements is uh, supposed to uh, add, that's what append does, at the end more of these numbers or whatever we're trying to do. So the array we want to put things in is the empty array. So I'm going to take the array out and put it here. Automatically the, um, the data type is going to change to this purple vector. And uh, the value is going to be the hit position. So uh, every new point that's generated by that hit position from the ray casting is going to be added in this little um, string of uh, positions. But I need to add one more control, which says that only add it if it was collided. So the append elements has this count. And this means how many times you want to add whatever one number is coming from here. Let's assume that the hit position is uh, 0, 0.0.0. Okay, I'm just using um, a, a random vector. 0, 0.0.0. Sorry, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, I can tell the append elements to add this 10 times. So the first 10 elements of our array is going to be 0, 0, 0. That, that's the, the vector. But if you drive this count using a Boolean, in Boolean logic, a zero is false, so no hit, and a one is true. We have a hit. So if we tell the append elements that when that is false, then just don't add that point. We don't need to add a point that doesn't have a hit. We expose the count either by going right click, add uh, input, and finding the, the count and all that, or this uh, little circle over here. If you Control or Command, click on this, it will add it here for you. So, collided, count. And what this is going to do now, every time a collision has been detected, it's going to add whatever value is here. And here we are getting an array of points which represent all 
the points generated by these uh, collisions. And we need to feed that now into the geometry stream, right? So, how to do that? Geometry property set. Geometry property set. And uh, what this is going to do, it's going to allow us either to introduce an iteration of numbers, or a, a, a loop, or an array. To set it to work with arrays, you just select the node and you say, I want it to be in array mode. And what I want to do is generate 3D points. Now, usually, if you want to modify some sort of geometry, to use um, a geometry modifier group as a deformer, and you just want to move some points around, you attach the in, uh, incoming geometry over here, and then you just change the point positions to move them outwards, to move them in a random way, and, and all that. But um, because we're not going to attach anything here, we want to create sort of a fresh, uh, a new collection of points. You have to tell the geometry property set uh, what kind of geometry data we're adding to it. Because if you put the geometry, you link it here, um, then the geometry property set knows what kind of geometry is coming in and what kind of data it has. And here, uh, for each point, we can have uh, color, which is a vertex color, color alpha, which is a RGBA vertex color, um, corner, uh, how uh, sharp the corner between those uh, points are, 3D points, which is the, the mesh points, uh, normals, uh, tangents, uh, UVs, UVW, weight, the, the weight is the vertex map. So these are all parameters that can be associated to uh, each uh, point. And uh, because we don't want any of that, we just tell this that we just want to generate a bunch of 3D points. That's it. As simple as that. And you say, this is the array of 3D points I want to um, generate points for. And you put it in the array. And then this creates a geometry uh, construct with whatever data is associated to it. And we're going to output it over here. And now we can't see the points, unfortunately. I don't know if I go to points mode and, and all that uh, nice stuff. No, we can't see it. But, because now the cloner uh, is set to read whatever this single object is now, okay, don't forget that Geometry Modifier group removes this object and replaces it with whatever the data coming from the Geometry Modifier group is. And as you can see here, the, the ray casting is, is working. Now, I've uh, created, well, this is pretty much the, the setup, nothing more. But I want to give you some, um, some information uh, about how you can create some helpers. And what are these helpers? Now, in this, the current way this works is that I can take the geometry and put it in here. And I can see my plane, wherever it is. Now, this is the, these are the wrong uh, positions. Uh, the right positions are the ones coming from the transform element. Because uh, these are the raw positions of that plane before they were transformed by the matrices. Now, I'm going to drag this over here. Now, we can see where it is. And I can say, okay, I can see where my points are coming from. And this is just the cloner cloning on everything. Because we, that's what we told it. We, we told the setup to just export all the points of the plane. And the cloner is just doing whatever it's told. So how can I make it so I don't have to go and do this? I want to do this. I can see the points. I want to do this. I can see the plane. I want to be able to have some sort of control and um, using a little drop down menu to select the plane to do my troubleshooting and then the geometry object. And the easiest way to do that is by using something called a switch node. And the switch node, you create uh, various uh, inputs that can be of various types and uh, depending on the number of inputs you're going to get a drop down with these numbers and you can always go and rename these uh, later on i may show you or not and uh, depending on which one you select the output is going to receive the equivalent one so if i have index zero the the result is going to be input one if i have an index of one this is it because these are you know, zero base, zero, one, two, three, four. Now, how do we use it with geometry, right? That's um, an interesting aspect. You can always go to the data type and start searching for things and all that. But th there is um, an interesting way you can do this. Uh, you can right click and go to the input. Uh, let's add all. One of them is called data type. And if you take any 
um, data type, like a geometry, and you put it in the data type, um, it's going to convert that into that data type. So everything now is blue. So I can remove all these inputs over here, um, add to, and what I want to do is I want in my inputs, I'm going to remove this later on, I'm going to take the geometry of my plane and put it in input 2 or 1, whatever you want, and take my final character uh, thingy doodle and put it in input, oops, let's do that, input 1. And I'm going to get the result of this. Now, I don't think I need this anymore. Um, it may be, it may even work if you take this and, I don't know, let's, let's try this. So, uh, let's press C, let's create a switch, because now I'm curious. If I take this and put the geometry in here, it doesn't allow you. That's the, the problem with this. So, first you need to expose the data type. Uh, tell the node that this is the data type. It converts your inputs into that data type. Now you can delete it, and now this will receive it. It's a bit of a, a you know, five clicks away, but it works. Now, the result from this is a geometry object, because that's what the data type thing did. And if I put this here, I can now go in this menu and select either my character or my plane. And this uh, allows us uh, to um, work a bit more efficiently. And the, the great thing about this is you can go to the input. The input is this menu here where it says index. Yeah, index, input, whatever. Um, if you propagate this, uh, what will happen is that when you select your generator, um, it will, oh, that's not the input. Yeah, uh, not the input. It's the index. I apologize for that. So the index, 0 or 1, I want to propagate the index. So propagate that port, and now we're going to have a drop-down, and we can go and make the selection directly from our object manager, which makes it quite efficient. And we can do the same thing with the transform matrices, right? And um, what you could do is, since the first matrix is the rotation, you can just take the rotation and put it here, propagate the port. And the second one is the translation. You can take the translation. And now, on this little bugger over here, we have uh, the 0 and 1, which indicate our character and whatnot. Uh, we have the rotation, and we have the translation. And uh, let me put this over here. And uh, let me... So this is going to move on the z-axis, and this is going to rotate around this. And, of course, you can rotate it down this way as well. And now this is going to highlight the top part of my character, look as if light is coming from the top and all that. And uh, this is the, the layout. Um, this is a setup. I'm going to have the scene where I've added, uh, you know, the interface a bit more fancy and all that. But um, this is uh, pretty much it. Um, what I want to do now is just show you that because we made it in this particular way and we have our interface exposed and all that uh, i can even put this on top that's how um, the deformers work um, i can add any number of objects underneath here or remove uh, the the puppet and the puppet again it's uh, animated so it's going to work properly you can animate the values here you can make uh, this uh, rotate around if you want and my preview little render animation uh, that's what it does uh, but uh, generally what you can do is you can remove anything you want here as long as this setup remains, you can add anything underneath that um, single, that object and scale it down. And you can add your little sphere, put it here, and scale it down. And you can do interesting things with this. There you go. So back to the final project, I have a couple of points to make. Uh, this particular example uh, shows how to do the ray casting using a plane. And, uh, of course, we go here, we can see that plane going around. Now, the question becomes, what do we do if we want this to be a different uh, type of object? Well, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples and mention some things you may need to take into consideration. And, uh, for example, instead of a plane, I'm going to select this node here. Uh, let's convert this to a cylinder. So you can see the cylinder is over there now. Um, it has uh, very few height segments and rotation segments and, and all that. So I'm going to go to my general interface. I'm going to uh, press uh, 
control shift or command shift on the Mac to remove the keyframes and zero out all the values. Good. And you can see my cylinder now is here. Let's go and uh, change the cylinder. And for all these things, you can add um, any interface elements you want to change objects, to uh, reset stuff and, and stuff like that. So first of all, I'm going to increase the radius a bit just to make it a bit larger and uh, the height, of course. And now we need a few more height segments. You can see that it's on a uh, different axes because I've exposed from my um, mesh primitive the orientation and although I wanted my plane to face in the minus uh, uh, Z for a cylinder it's going to be different so we need something like uh, a plus Y so now we can see the cylinder if I want to do some sort of ray casting from everything and at the same time I can go and say well I want to slice here I just want half the cylinder to create something like this curved uh, ray casting uh, mechanism and uh, let's go back to the cylinder here and make sure that we have uh, more rotation segments uh, just to make it a bit tighter and let's uh, set the slice to let's say a hundred degrees there you go so this is the object that's doing the ray casting so let's go back to our uh, modifier and change this to clones and uh, you will see that oh that doesn't do anything good and uh, the reason for this is that the cylinder, a cylinder object, um, the, the normals are facing outwards. So this is now shooting rays in the opposite direction, right? It's shooting the rays outwards. So in these kind of cases, you just need to make sure you know exactly what the raw data you're using is. And uh, there are very simple fixes. So for example, let's press C and type the word normal. And there's something uh, called a reverse normal. I'm going to drag it in here. And now you can see that reversing the normals uh, will allow the ray casting to, to happen based on that uh, cylinder thing I had. So I can go to the ray casting, which is on uh, that side, and it's casting rays uh, in, in that direction. I need to raise it up because as far as I remember, the character you can see is taller. There you go. So I just need to go to my transformations, which have been exposed, and I'm going to offset this upwards until it sort of touches the floor a bit. There you go. And uh, now we should have a much better ray casting uh, solution coming over here. And uh, these rays are um, converging towards the, the center. But anyhow, um, this uh, should work with all sorts of uh, configurations. Um, as long as uh, you are mindful of the uh, the various um, the, the various attributes where they're coming from, which direction they're going, and and all that, uh, but you can see that this is uh, quite scalable, and uh, yeah, this uh, completes uh, the setup and uh, even a bit more. I hope you enjoyed this uh, mini tutorial. And uh, I'd like to remind you to subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you um, are always aware when new videos uh, are posted. And also, don't forget, go to Cineversity.com and you will see there's a link to the new Cineversity that has a ton of uh, very high quality tutorials. And then go to the YouTube pages of uh, Maxon, the Maxon training team, Red Giant, and you can also attend uh, the Ask the Trainer seminars, they're free. The Demystifying series, uh, VFX and Chill, which is a fantastic and very funny series. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at NosemanGR, and uh, generally just pay attention.